Hello, welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Fidelia Aguncha. The United Nations Children's Fund says about 1,400 schools have been destroyed with about 2,295 teachers killed since the start of Boko Haram insurgency in northeast Nigeria. A report by UNICEF says an estimated 3 million children are in need of emergency education support. According to the report, over 57% of schools in Borno State may remain closed in the 2017-2018 academic session. The UN agency also decried the growing cholera outbreak in the IDP camp, saying more than 3,900 people, including over 2,450 children, were affected by the outbreak. The humanitarian agency also pleaded for funds, saying life-saving emergency programs in northeast Nigeria remain underfunded. Meanwhile, in a separate report, the United Nations says it has averted a famine in northeast Nigeria. The UN had earlier this year raised alarm over an imminent famine in the region owing to lack of farm activities due to Boko Haram attacks. However, in, fresh, in a fresh statement, the Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Mark Lokak, said the situation is now much brighter due to the scale up of international assistance to the Lake Chad Basin. He, however, warned the job is far from done. An appeal court in Abuja has ordered former National Security Advisor Sambo Dasuki to appear in the trial of former People's Democratic Party spokesperson Olisa Mitu. Mitu's lawyer had argued Dasuki was a required witness since the manager client was accused of mismanaging came from his office. The order of the appeal court sets aside the decision of the Federal High Court, which refused to compel Dasuki's appearance in the trial. The court also ordered the DSS in whose custody Dasuki has been for over one year to provide him at the next date of the trial. Nigeria's federal, local and state government shared 637.7 billion naira as allocation in the month of August. The amount represents an increase of 170 billion naira from the previous allocation in the month of July. Given a breakdown of the release, the Accountant General of the Federation said the amount was made up of a statutory distributable revenue of 550.9 billion naira and value-added tax revenue of 86.712 billion naira. Total revenue, statutory gross, is 550.99 Two billion. There is also an element of that of eighty six point seven one two billion, making a total of six hundred and thirty seven point seven zero four billion. And this figure is distributed among the three tiers of government after deduction of relevant cost of collections due to the revenue generating agencies. On the whole, the federal government of the gross statutory revenue got 263.609 billion. States received 132.184 billion. A local government received 101.908 billion. I beg your pardon. On the whole, it is evident from the records and from what we've distributed today that the figure distributed this month is by far greater than the distribution for the previous month by 169 billion 852 million state governors have asked the federal government for a bailout in the form of budget support Dave Omahi, governor of Ebony State, who disclosed this at the end of the National Economic Council meeting, said the request is meant to assist the governors of set salary arrears owed to workers in their various states. He said most of the governors persuaded Kemi Adelshan, Minister of Finance, to find ways of sustaining the provision of budget support to the states. 
The request is coming at a time the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has accused some governors of mismanaging previous bailout funds accrued to them. The Nigerian Senate has passed a bill approving death sentence for kidnappers. The passage of the bill comes less than a year after the Lagos State House of Assembly approved a death sentence penalty for kidnappers whose victims die in custody. The bill passed by the Senate also outlaws abduction and approves a 30-year jail sentence for anyone who collaborates with an abductor. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has fixed Saturday, February 16, 2019, for the presidential and national assembly elections. The electoral body made the announcement through its official Twitter handle. It also said the gubernatorial and state assembly elections and the Federal Capital Territory Council elections will hold on March 2, 2019. INEC also announced the timetable and schedule of activities for the Ekiti and Oshun gubernatorial election will be released on Thursday, October 5th. An assistant commissioner of police serving in Zamfara State, Emmanuel Adeniyi, has been reportedly kidnapped by unknown gunmen. Emmanuel, who is attached to the state police command in charge of criminal investigation department, was abducted on Thursday on his way to Gusau, Zamfara State capital. The Zamfara State Police Command has confirmed the incident and promised to ensure his safe release. The Kaduna State Government has obtained a bench warrant to arrest members of the Coalition of Northern Youth who issued a quick notice to Igbos living in the region. The group had given Igbo residents in the 19 states of the North a three-month ultimatum to leave the region or be forced out by October 1st. They later withdrew the notice, which was widely criticized by the presidency and other prominent Nigerians. Confirming the recent development, Senior Special Assistant to the Governor on Media and Publicity, Samuel Arowan, assured residents, including the evils, of their safety in Cardinal State. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, says it is ready to launch a massive evidence-based advocacy campaign for the patronage of Made in Nigeria products. MAN President Frank Jacobs said the advocacy campaign is aimed at driving industrial development and economic growth by increasing patronage of locally made products by the government and its ministries, departments and agencies. MAN believes that the quest of the federal government to promote made in Nigeria goods can be best achieved if the executive order on patronage of locally produced goods is based on sector-specific margins of preference. The implementation of sector-specific margins of preference would have on the growth of one, manufacturing output, additional investment, income, employment, as well as five, government tax revenue. When we patronize Made in Nigeria products, we expand our industrial base, create more jobs, and reduce the human misery through, brought about by poverty in the country. Jacobs, while commending the federal government for her support, solicits effective implementation of executive order and using the margins of preference of at least 35% in favor of the products that are locally made. I urge the government to support the aforementioned noble actions by considering and implementing the following recommendations. One, set a margin of preference for made in Nigeria products for government. Although the margin of preference for the five pilot sectors averaged 63%, Man suggests only 35% for starters, taking into cognizance the, light, the tight financial position of government at the moment. Two, encourage state and local governments to enshrine patronage of made in Nigeria products in their procurement policies and processes. Three, sustain, monitor, enforce and ensure that the 40% participation rate for MSMEs provided in the executive order is strictly adhered to. 
four, create a sustainable platform through which the general public will be continuously educated on the need to jettison the current penchant for foreign goods and therefore patronize locally manufactured products. And five, Review the law against dumping, smuggling, adulteration, and counterfeit activities in the country to impose stricter penalty on culprits. Ekiti State Governor Ayodele Fayoshi has reacted to the arrest of two of his top officials by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, over allegations of corruption. The anti-graft agency is accusing the officials of mismanaging bailout funds allocated to the state. Reacting to this, the governor in a statement by his spokesperson, Larry Olayinka, said the arrest was an attempt to intimidate the Ekiti state government. He also accused the anti-graft agency of being biased in its anti-corruption war, describing it as the attack dog of the all-progressive Congress government. <laughs> Give him his shoes somewhere here. His phone and uh, everything. Don't do like that, Leno. Thank you. So, <laughs> bye bye. Hey, where do you Oga, huh? where do you think you are going? Who? Oh. You never shake body. Eh? Yeah. You never shake body. Shake body, wait, see? Wait. Huh? You never shake body. Huh. Eh, I don't get combo for my body. You go take for here. Sit down, there. down. How come, man? What's this man still doing here? They say I do shake body. I shake body. I shake body. They say I do this. And I say I don't get combo. You are asking for money. Sorry, ma'am. Asking for money to bail a suspect is an act of corruption. Both of you will be punished. Corruption is not allowed within the force. Remember, police is your friend. Giving and taking bribe is wrong. Corruption, not in my country. Stop corruption now. Corruption not in my Welcome back. It's time for business with Ngozi Okoye. Thank you, Fidelia. Nigeria's excess crude account is currently at $2.310 billion as of September 22, which is reported to be lower than a year earlier. The figure, which was contained in a statement by Finance Minister Kemi Adeosun, stated that the account fell from $2.453 billion on the same date last year. Militants' attack on oil facilities last year reduced Nigeria's crude production by as much as a third. However, output has largely recovered since then, with production now hovering around 1.8 billion barrels per day. Oil prices tumbled Friday as investors considered the potential fallout from the independence referendum in the oil-rich Kurdish region of Iraq. Kurdish voters on overwhelmingly cast their ballots in the favor of independence from Iraq on Monday. The vote results may trigger a hostile response from Iraq's central government as well as from neighboring countries and disrupt the flow of as much as 500,000 barrels a day of Kurdish oil exported through a Turkish port. Meanwhile, Brent crude fell 14 cents to 57.26 dollars a barrel while u.s crude futures shed 16 cents to 51.39 dollars a barrel the stock the nigerian stock market barely escaped red today after a, an up down trading session that left the all share index at 35,439.98 basis points which is 0.03 percent increase a total number of 27 stock appreciated with mobile Lafarge Africa PLC, UBA, First Bank of Nigeria Holdings, and Dangote Sugar topping the chart. The top decliners include Nestle, Guinness Nigeria PLC, Nigeria Brewers, Cap PLC, and Stambik Abertasi. Meanwhile, leading the top traders are UBA, Guarantee Trust Bank, Axis, Zenith, 
and the sterling banks. The traded volume is 235.824 million, valued at 3.833 billion in 2,809 deals. And that is it on business news. We take a short break now. When we return, it's back to Fidelia with foreign and sports stories. Don't go away. One with kilo man say no. Say that I drew for more than one hour. Yeah, me. Or I ain't any more unche. Or I ain't any more unche. Can you run for more long? Can satisfy you? Need or I ain't any more unche. Hey, what is my culture? Can you cut through on people? Hey, Joe, I'm a bin. Hello, hello, gam. My daughter, he let say, let let say. I I am assure you. Five minutes. My daughter, he egg babe. You are deceiving another customer just like you deceived us. The same way he deceived us. Eh? Why? Hey, Tony, say. Boba kuro o le jeun o le o le o le jeun Boba kuro o le jeun ya mi Boba kuro o le jeun Workshop mi le le yi ibe ti ba ti nse lo ti nje iyan lo pe ni workshop ibi to ba ti work ni ko ma ti shop Ewo you cannot base your business on lies go down now it is corruption and it cannot work not in my country Corruption not in my country You're watching news now on TV360. Al-Shabaab militants on Friday attacked a Somalia government military base in the town of Bariri. The militants claimed to have killed 17 soldiers stationed at the base. The jihadist group used suicide bombs in their attack, which were followed by gunmen, a tactic it has used in previous attack on military contingents. It claimed to have taken control of the base and seized military vehicles in the region. The UN Human Rights Council has voted to extend the mandate of the Commission of Inquiry into Human Rights Violation in Burundi. The decision comes a day after Burundi's ambassador told the UN and 46 other members of the council that their decision to send a team of experts meant the full inquiry was no longer needed. However, the council has voted by 22 to 11 with 14 abstentions to back a European Union resolution to extend its mandate for a year. On to sports now, Alex Iwobi says he has learned consistency is a key to maintaining a regular sport at Arsenal. Iwobi, who broke into the first team from the club's academy in 2015, has struggled to feature regularly for the Gunners with just two league appearances under his belt this season. The Nigeria international admitted he missed out on a regular starting place due to his dropped performance level and has, and has to mix hard work with a positive attitude to regain the trust of Arsene Wenger. Manchester City striker Sergio Aguero has been involved in a car crash in Amsterdam. The Argentine broke his ribs as his car crashed into a pole in the Dutch city. He is expected to be out for at least two months as he recovers from the injury. The forward has been transported to Manchester where his club doctors will assess him. England midfielder Dele Ali has been banned for one international match following his middle finger gesture during the World Cup qualifier against Slovakia. The Tottenham player was also fined 5,000 Swiss francs by FIFA, who says the incident on the 4th of September was offensive and unsporting. Ali will miss Thursday's World Cup qualifier at home to Slovenia. Well, that's all on news now. Thanks for watching. I am Fidelia Aguncha.